What is going on guys? Welcome back to Pat Outdoors. Today we're going to be going over a bike that I just got delivered. I've been waiting to get one of these for a while now, the Talaria XXX. So this bike came out in the US a couple months ago and Luna Cycle in California is one of the main dealers and it seems like they're always out of stock of this thing. And whenever they do have it in stock, I always hesitate on buying one because I'm trying to avoid getting in an argument with my wife about how many bikes there are in the garage. But I pulled the trigger anyway, so let's go unbox this thing and see what's inside. Now you might notice that the top of the box is already partially opened, and that's because I had to inspect this thing for damages upon delivery. Unfortunately, LunaCycle only gave me the option of choosing FedEx to get this thing shipped from California to Virginia, and of course, FedEx botched the delivery. I met the freight driver in front of my house during my lunch break today and then he shows me this instead of letting me know ahead of time, which is very unfortunate. The box was dropped at some point during transit and the wooden block that holds the fork in place has ripped off the main base. So this bike has just been jiggling around in there. Handle with care. Thank you, FedEx. He gave me the option of rejecting the package and then waiting for another one later on, but I am way too excited to ride this thing, so I accepted it anyway. Hopefully, nothing too bad. Okay, moment of truth. The back looks like it's perfectly fine and centered. It's just the front that I'm worried about. I really like the satin black finish. Just checking this big box, the wheel. That's not too bad. Just a few minor scratches. That's a huge brake rotor. Look at that. At 220. Jeez. Now those are some super moto tires. Looks like a pair of pegs. Feels like a tool kit. Key tags. I guess those are the new keys. The front portion of the headset to lock the handlebar in place. And then it looks like the bushings that go on the side of the wheel with an O-ring on it. It works just like a dirt bike. Wow, that thing looks cool. It's got a heat sink on top with a built-in fan. I have not seen that on a charger. And the new charge port. Looks like it only goes one way. I'm gonna let this charge for a couple hours and then we'll hop back on it and assemble it, take it out. All right, well, it's been six hours, so I'm sure this thing is fully, fully charged. Pretty straightforward. You just insert and twist clockwise to lock it in place and then counterclockwise to unlock it. I'll take this front strap off. Oh, I think that's how it's supposed to be. So the fork is designed very much like a full-size dirt bike where there's four Allen bolts pinching clamps on both sides to hold the axle in place. I really like that design. Looks like a four millimeter Allen bolt. It's an eight millimeter Allen for the main axle. Cap off the other side. There we go. Take this stupid block out of the way. Don't look like too much damage. There's some scratches on this side. Not too bad overall. But for the front wheel, you gotta remember to have these bushings that are on the side of it. Careful not to damage the O-ring that secures it in place. Then next you gotta take out the black plate that keeps the brake pad separated. And then putting the wheel on is pretty straightforward. I would initially focus on aligning the brake rotor in between the two brake pads in the caliper. And everything will essentially line up on its own. Looking good so far. Put the cap on the other side of the axle. Gonna snug the cap. No need to go crazy on that since the axle is gonna be held in place by the four Allen bolts. So just snug the cap on the axle to center it, and then we're gonna work on the four smaller Allen bolts on the bottom of the fork. No need to go crazy on these four pinch bolts as well because the bottom of the fork 
is cast and you don't want to damage it, crack it or strip the threads. That's not bad. It's not too heavy. Like I said, 125 pounds. Makes this thing just a smidge heavier than my razor. A lot of people complain about how small this bike is. I guess coming from a Suron, but for me, I'm only five foot eight and my feet are flat foot on the ground. It, this seems just right, exactly the height I was looking for. Throw the handlebar on. So the cables on the left side come connected, but the two cables on the right side do not. The red one, I believe, is for the brake sensor and the green one is for the throttle. And the stem size, in case you're curious, if you want to swap out the handlebar, is 31.8 millimeter. Well, that's a little frustrating. The hardware that came with the bike uh, do not match. You'll see these four black bolts are supposed to be to hold the cap for the headset on, but one of them is significantly larger than the other ones. It's not even the same thread pitch. So I'm just gonna have to find a different bolt. I was wondering why I was having a hard time screwing on a simple bolt to a headset. So just have the headset bolts snug until you have the handlebar perfectly centered and rotated to the position that you want it and then you just gotta tighten them in a cross pattern now that we have the handlebar tightened in place make sure to connect the throttle and the brake connectors and the bike came with some velcro i guess you can just use this to clean it up however you want it and here's how the top side looks like. There is one cable that we still need to secure and that is this brake line. And that's how it looks up close. Now let's move on to installing the pegs. Now the tool bag did come with a wrench and I believe that for the pegs, you're supposed to use the 15 millimeter. So the pegs are designed like any other dirt bike on the market. It's not labeled left or right, but how you determine which one goes on the left or the right is how it flexes. Imagine if it were to be mounted, it's supposed to flex back. Yeah, it's a 15 millimeter for the lock nuts. Careful not to damage this wire that's by the kickstand. It's kind of an awkward space to fit a wrench. So you just gotta turn it bit by bit and be pretty patient. All right, now let's do the other side. So a little bit more room on the right side of the bike since there is no cable in place. I'm gonna air up the tires to 35 PSI. I'm gonna get some of this stuff out of the way. I'm gonna take a quick break and throw away a lot of this trash. The garage is getting a little crowded here. I'm gonna install the fender, though I'm not sure how long I'm gonna keep it on for. I kind of bought this bike because it's uh, a lot more discreet versus my dirt bikes and it's a lot smaller than the Suron. I kind of wanted something that looks like an electric mountain bike and I feel like with the Fender on it certainly looks like a dirt bike. Northern region is just very strict with this type of stuff, okay, in California. And I'm not really a big fan of how it looks anyway. I think there's a huge gap between the top of the tire and the bottom of the fender. Let me know what you guys think. Does it look better with the fender on or should I just leave this thing off? We are fully finished assembling this bike, though I'm going to do one more thing before we take this thing out for its first ride. Some of you guys already probably had a feeling what I'm going to do. I'm going to be taking off this plastic cover on the left side and snipping the speed limiter wire, which should uncap the 28 mile an hour top speed and let it go to something like 48. All right, so the smaller Allens is a three millimeter. Here we have the charge cable. And we just gotta find the brown wire that loops into itself. There it is. This is the wire that I'm gonna be snipping, which should take off the speed limiter. We're just gonna tuck everything back in. Don't know what the hell is going on outside. Hopefully it's FedEx dropping off another Talaria at my house. No need to tighten this too much. It is a plastic cover. Mm. 
just turn it on. Yeah, yeah. RFID. Oh, the headlights are on. All right, first ride in this thing. Start button. Yeah. Gonna skip eco and go straight to sport. She's gonna come up right away. Oh! Very little effort. Oh my god, dude, this thing's so much fun. Right? Yes. Dude, it's pretty fast, man. Alright, I'll do I'll do a quick race with them. <laughs> oh yeah, we got it boys. <laughs> you like it? Yeah, it's nice man. It's got good pickle. I think it'll be faster than the Grom for sure. Yeah, you can definitely wheelie it if you are not focused. So right. Just don't loop it on the first day. You'll need to upgrade over the winter. Because we're <laughs> close, but when I get the third motor put in, oh, it'll, shit. It'll, it'll edge you out. <laughs> It's interesting how loud this thing is though. Is it loud at all? No, it's pretty quiet. Really? When I'm riding, it sounds like there's a howling. No, you're inevitably going to hear some noise. You know what I'm saying? Is it quieter than my Razor? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, your Razor is ridiculous, man. So that's how you change the settings. There it is, guys. 54 miles an hour. Was that car holding you up? Or yeah. Did you top out? Oh, okay. Uh, it it, but it pegged out at 54. That's pretty good. <laughs> Damn, the regen on this thing is ridiculously strong, though. I definitely have to turn that down. This bike is definitely freaking deep that Twenty-six miles into this trip and I am at 59% battery which I would say is pretty good considering I've been hammering it a lot and I've been in sport for majority of this occasionally I would switch to eco 
spot. Good thing I brought the charger with me because I really didn't discuss this route with Juan and Anthony. So I got no idea how many miles we're actually riding tonight, but we are testing the range, I guess. This place is pretty beautiful. Got the bike back home in the garage and first day we rode 52 miles on the odometer though i do think this is a little bit optimistic as far as speedo and odometer reading the gps that my buddy was using was saying that we rode about 48 miles today so there's a little bit of a difference it does say we have eight percent battery life left that's just about what i expected as far as um, battery life since i've been mashing the throttle all day on this thing can't really blame me though. I'm just super excited to have this new bike. Man, I got so much range anxiety today from this thing flashing at me for the last 45 minutes though. So that was a little bit frustrating. I also want to get to know this uh, menu a little bit better. I haven't had a chance to toggle through the menu or any of the settings. So we'll dig more into that. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you like this kind of content, want to keep up with my Talaria, or any of my other projects, consider subscribing to this channel. But this is going to be it for today. Thank you for watching.